Hi guys and gals and welcome back to another Bork No Game video. Today's video is dedicated to Vance Coliseum Tactics. So let's jump right into it. Right here at column B, we're going to talk about buffing nightmares first. Buffing nightmares are the number one priority at the start of the fight. And the reason why is because each buffing nightmare adds pressure at the beginning of the fight. The later you use this, the less effective it becomes, mainly because buffs and debuffs already have occurred to the point that it doesn't add as nearly as much pressure when a nightmare does it. The reason why it's so important in the beginning is because pretty much everyone is trying to hit as hard as they can to either one, test the opponent, or two, down them. Most of the time you're testing the opponent to see where you gauge either your an even fight or the opponent is much stronger. And buffing nightmares are a good way to gauge, gauge your opponent at the very beginning. Now debuffing nightmares, this is like pretty much a huge like controversial point whether you should use them or not. I say use this if you want to annoy the opponent, if you want to confuse them at the start of the first demon. Usually the thing is is most opponents will not switch out during a debuffing nightmares when the first demon is about to occur very closely, mainly because it throws off timing, it's not really worth it. So, you know, feel free to use debuffing nightmares and if you're wondering this is Phoenix in the current event, you can get it. 5% drop rate at the last two stages for the Phoenix event. Okay, Elemental Nightmares. Lindworm and Freeze Golem. These two nightmares are pretty much the premier ones. They are ideally the only ones that you are using. And the reason for that is, is because they pretty much provide the most effectiveness. So that means it can increase damage buffs, debuffs, and heals. So they can do it all. They add the most pressure and ideally they are summoned during a demon ideally mainly freeze golem but lindworm not so much freeze golem can seriously control a fight and just know if you down an opponent during demon it's very deadly because the opponent will have a combo advantage when as soon as they jump out of you know being down so when you're downing opponents with you know elemental nightmares just note that during demon specifically it's very very difficult whether to say it's the right decision to do that or not Kalo support nightmares, specifically Yorm and Noin. Yorm and Noin are extremely, like, Yorm is extremely deadly right now. He is one of the best nightmares in Colosseum right now. If you have him, it's fantastic. I recommend building him or at least having him available on your grid. Reason being is because higher end Kalo, you can increase, like, the procs for DC2, uh, support boot 2, recovery support, all those fantastic skills. Like this, Yorm is top tier right now in our Grand Coliseum. As far as Noin goes, uh, she is definitely there, but she's more or less there to mitigate damage. So Imo, she's more of a defensive nightmare. So she would be like, if you're about to go down, then drop a Noin, you know? Like usually around this time where, you know, you feel like you're going to be dropped. Noin is a good way to be defensive just because DC2s won't proc as much, recovery support won't proc as much for the opponent, and it'll give you some breathing room. Now let's talk about Justice. Now everything we know, Justice, we don't have to go, Justice is Justice. Justice is essentially, if you can come back, she will bring you there. Just note that Justice is a monster. She will upset the fight, all right? She will upset the fight. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have seen this. Now, some things to talk about. Eris has fallen from grace, and what I mean from that, she is not relevant anymore, in my opinion, outside of being a stat stick. If you can stay above 300 SP for, before a demon summons, you don't need Eris, alright? So, Eris is sort of like a crutch. If you can cycle her off of your nightmare loadout, she is just essentially a way to spam skills, and honestly, rear guard shouldn't be spamming skills that much, specifically clerics. And Vanguard shouldn't be spamming either IMO. Ideally, everyone's working on how to use SP management appropriately, right? Lastly, let's talk about the most overpowered nightmare if used properly in our current meta, and that's Shadow Lord. And the reason why is because we have a lot of water weapons available, both, you know, mainly in the Vanguard department. So if you can time Shadow Lord pr appropriately, it can be just as strong as Justice. With the right measures if you time this at the very like end or in the beginning they can seriously dictate the flow of the fight just make sure you know obviously your opponent does you doesn't use lindworm 
if you're strong enough it doesn't really matter because shadow lord's buff is so powerful you can probably down the enemies if you have enough aoe weapons so that's my review on nightmares as far as an order goes ideally you know use elemental nightmares during demon buff nightmares at the very beginning you know debuff nightmares to like scuff opponents hollow support nightmares they can be everywhere but yorm can definitely be used during a demon comeback nightmare at the very end Aeris phased out shadow lord ideally at the end or in the beginning it doesn't really matter it's all based off of your guild discretion just note that shadow lord is very very relevant in the scene let's talk about demons really quick so staff demon is essentially low priority you know used to farm life force ideally this is pretty much if you have both staff demon it's a slugfest and it's really hard to say like who will win just because like at this point if you win this demon it's all about life force at that point you know tome demon it's high priority if you don't win it you either you switch and die or you kill the opponent you have no options idea if you know that you're going to lose just switch and die it's, it's seriously a painful demon to face Arp Demon is probably the most devastating one out of all of them. You guys probably already know this, so that's why I'm covering the demons really fast. But essentially, Harp Demon rules the fight. Whoever gets 20 stacks first will essentially rule the entire fight. If it goes Harp and then Tome, if you lose Harp, it's fine. As long as the fight stays even and you only get downed once. If you win Tome the second time around, you can totally come back with Justice at the very end, debuff your opponents justice and then take the ship down twice and pretty much it's the best comeback demon that you can get is the tome one right harp uh, it's 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 really hard to say just because it's really really powerful as far as class priorities goes we don't really talk about it this much but the thing is that i want to say is that vanguards have one job specifically you have high stats and you have high skill levels all right Ideally, prioritize holding hammers and spears. This is so you can add more pressure for the enemy team's clerics. The more damage you're dealing towards all the different opponents, the better. Yes, you can down people, and AoE is more for, you know, higher end people. Just note that AoE adds more pressure, and it's best if you have high stats and skill levels to pretty much, you know, go with them. Now for as far as DC1 weapons goes, ideally keep it to 5 or 7, and then for DC2 weapons, ideally keep it to level 10. Best case scenario, keep DC2 weapons at level 15, and they will be on your grid for quite some time. It's okay to run salad, don't be afraid. And then as far as Sorks and Minstrels goes, it's definitely a lot more complicated. Sorks and Minstrels rule the flow of the fight if the vanguards have like a 10 to 15k CP difference, they seriously rule the outcome of the fight. Sorks and Minstrels kind of play off of each other. If you're playing defensively as a Sork, you drop the attack. And then as a min as a Sork, if you're playing offensive, you drop defense. For Minstrels, you know, you do the opposite. If you're playing offensive, buff attack. Playing defensive, keep the defense at red, but still prioritize attack because attack is pretty much the most important stat. And as far as Clarice goes, do not spam heals. Hold your two, uh, two healing stabs. Do not spam heals, especially at the beginning of the fight, unless you know that you're going to lose. And lastly, orb, gang, you know, if you guys want to hit 500 plus combo by yourself, just run Hulu ahead by yourself and I'm pretty sure you guys can get like an insane amount of combo. Like for real. It's crazy how much combo you can do with Hulu ahead. So that's pretty much it for advanced Kalo tactics. The biggest thing is just note that Harp and Demon, uh, Harp and Tome Demon, is pretty much one of the biggest and hardest fights that you can have for a Kalo fight and you can come back from it if you don't drop into ship that many times just because Tome Demon is very very powerful at the end. And then lastly as far as Nightmares goes, don't forget that Shadow Lord holds relevance. Let's cover some news about Grand Kalo. You can see what league you're affiliated at the in the Grand Kalo page and you can tell which guilds will reach the finals based off of the text right here in the middle for us it says in time slot 6 i believe guilds rank 36 or higher in time slot will advance so it'll vary on the text depending on what time slot you're in anyways that's it for this video thanks for entering the giveaway i'm looking for one last person to contact me i already have four people who have, i've done the giveaways with so thanks so much for participating 
Let me know if you enjoyed this guide. Drop some tips if you think there's more that needs to be covered. And that's it for this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitch. Follow me on Twitter. And I will see you in the next one.